Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today in this video, we'll be discussing about the factors controlling the X-ray beam. There are certain factors which control the X-ray beam as to how much amount and what quality of X-ray beam is produced. Let's get started. We have already seen that the X-rays, they are produced when a voltage difference is created between the cathode and the anode. And when the tungsten filament is heated, it produces electrons. Now, if we talk about how to increase the efficiency of the X-ray machine, we can think of several conditions like, suppose, see, we have seen that there is a power supply to the cathode, okay? because of which the tungsten filament is heated up. Now, if the power which is supplied to the cathode is supplied for more duration, means the power is supplied for more duration to the X-ray tube, then what would happen? The filament would be heated for a longer time and there would be increased number of electrons that would be produced, thereby creating more number of X-ray photons. So this is the first factor, which is the exposure time or the exposure duration which controls the X-ray beam. What does the exposure time actually means? That is for how many seconds the exposure took place. Okay. See, in this graph, what we can see is, see, this is one second exposure. In one second exposure, if suppose 50 number of photons were produced, then when we have doubled the time of the exposure, when the exposure duration or the exposure time was doubled, then what happened? Double amount of X-ray photons were produced. Okay. Here, what we have done, we have kept the tube voltage peak, mean energy and the maximal energies constant. And we can see that exposure time is doubled when the number of photons generated when the exposure time is doubled then the number of photons generated at all the energies is also doubled now see here what we have done we have increased the exposure time what if we increase the amount of current which is flowing through this extra tube matlab wohi same amount of current ko humne zyada time ke liye diya tha ab if we increase the amount of current keeping the time constant. Also, if the current in the X-ray tube, that is the milliampere setting is increased, then what is happening? More power is applied to the filament, which heats up and releases more electrons that collide with the target to produce the radiations. Okay. Now, if we look at this graph, same as the previous one, here also if we are keeping the tube voltage peak, mean energy and the maximal energies of the photons constant and we look at this graph then as the tube current is increasing, we are doubling the tube current. When the tube current is doubled, the number of photons generated at all the energies is also doubled. Deekho, sari energies mein, jitte bhi photons generate ho rin, they are also getting doubled. So, what we can say if we talk about exposure time which is calculated in seconds and the tube current in milliamperes, we can say that it is both of them they are directly proportional to the quantity of radiation that is how many number of photons would be, would be produced. We have seen when both of these were doubled the number of photons produced were also doubled. Next if the product of time and current is constant then the quantity of radiation that is the number of photons produced is also constant. Example, we can see if a machine which is operating at 10 milliampere for one second. So what is the number of photons produced? 10 milliampere seconds to agar ek machine operate kar rahi hai, it would produce same current as that which is operating at 20 milliampere seconds for 0 0.5 seconds. Why? Because in dono ka product would be same constant. Now, with these two factors, we can define a terminology which is called as beam quantity or beam intensity, which is the number of photons which are present in an X-ray beam. 
okay next if we increase the tube voltage peak okay that the tube voltage peak agar hum voltage badhate hain peak voltage if we increase then what would happen the difference between the cathode and the anode would increase thereby what would happen there would be increase in the energy of each electron means ye jo electron hai inki energy increase ho jayegi there would be increase in the energy of electron when it strikes the target so there is more probability of the electrons converting into the photons and what we can see increase in the kilo voltage peak what does it does increasing the kilo voltage peak of the x-ray machine it increases what it increases the number of photons which are generated next it increases the mean energy of the photon number of photons to generate honge wo bhi increase honge mean energy and the maximum amount of energy maximum energy jo hogi photons ki that would also be increased with this terminology which is tube voltage peak we can define a term which is beam quality what is beam quality it is the mean energy of an x ray beam now if we plot this graph we can see that when the tube current and the exposure time are held constant okay now here what would you do what would we do will held the tube current and the exposure time constant then the tube voltage peak is increased and there is increase dekho tube voltage peak increase ho raha hai so there is increase in the mean energy of the beam and the total photons emitted and the maximum energy so mean energy maximum energy and the relative number of photons these three would be increased next what we can see is of the continuous spectrum of x ray photons the photons with sufficient energy only they penetrate through the x ray uh, through the anatomic structures and they reach the image receptors which could be either the digital image receptor or the x ray field the lower energy photons which do not reach up to the receptors they contribute to patient risk okay so what is it is better to remove these lower energy photons x ray photons for this what we do is filtration okay to remove the lower energy photons filtration is done now what is filtration it is the process of removing the lower energy photons from the beam while allowing the high energy photons that are able to contribute to making an an image to pass through bas jo high energy photons hain jo ki ek image banane mein contribute karenge they'll pass through now this filtration it is of two types inherent and added filtration inherent filtration in this what happens is materials inherent means which is already present in the x ray tube these accounts for the materials that the x ray beam encounters when it travels from the focal spot to form an usable beam outside the tube enclosure okay so what are these materials which the x ray beam beam would encounter during its path these are glass wall insulating oil barrier material that pre that prevents the oil from escaping to the x ray port now this basically usually ranges from equivalent of 0.5 mm to 2 mm of aluminum next is added filtration it is supplied in the form of aluminum disc which is placed over the pot in the head of the x ray machine so the total filtration it would be a combination of inherent and added filtration and as per the government norms the total filtration should be of 1.5 mm of aluminum for the machine which is operating at 70 kilo uh, kilovolt and 2.5 mm for those operating at higher voltages next terminology or the next factor which could control the x ray beam is collimation now what is a collimator it is actually a metallic barrier with an aperture in the middle which is used to restrict the size of the x ray beam and the volume of tissue irradiated see the collimator is also could be of two types which is the round collimator and the rectangular collimator 
the round collimator it is actually a thick plate of radio opaque material usually lead with circular opening centered over the pot in the x ray head through which the x ray beam emerges okay th thick thick plate of radio opaque material jo ki x ray head ke port mein centered rahega through which the x ray boom beam would emerge this is usually built into an open ended aiming cylinders this is the round collimator c this is centered over this jahan se x rays release honge and this is actually c ye beam restricted to circle ye kya actually aiming cylinders this is the round collimator next is the rectangular collimator it further limits the size of the beam to just larger than the x ray film further reducing the patient exposure matlab jo x ray film ka size hai usse just larger to thoda sa larger aayega aapka rectangular collimator this is the rectangular collimator here the beam is restricted to the rectangle now this process what does it does that is the process of collimation what does it does it reduces the exposed tissue volume okay next it reduces the number of scattered photons that would reach the film why because the photons would reach into the via the collimator next what is the result of these two there is reduced patient exposure and improved images are seen the dental x ray beam are usually collimated to a circle 2.75 inches that is usually 7 cm in diameter at the patient's face so next and the last factor controlling the x ray beam is the inverse square law now what does this say the intensity of the x ray beam what is the intensity of the x ray beam the number of photons which is present per cross sectional area per unit exposure time this depends on the distance of measuring device from the focal spot okay now for a given beam the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source okay see this intensity i1 is inversely proportional to the square of distance d1 square of distance d1 why because the x ray beam spreads out as it moves from its source now if we change the distance between the x ray tube and the patient switching from a machine with short aiming tube to long aiming tube then that is marked effect on the skin exposure so this is it about the factors controlling the x ray beam now do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel do hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss any latest updates thank you keep visiting